Oh, shit. <laughs> we are live! <laughs> and right as I pushed the live button, I forgot that I should have turned the TV on and added the HDMI cord so we can see the comments better. So we will be looking down for a little while. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Your Six Cover. Appreciate you showing up. we got a, my guest, the X-Ring. As always. Car King comes in first at 6 o'clock, 6.09 p.m. And then you guys are saying, Sig Boy out there saying that I'm I'm texting him and telling him I'm going live. You actually damn mine. I didn't text him. Papa's Place, Talking Rock. Bill Geyser, DW, Drew Bradley, Thomas Teak, The Shaggy Rifleman, Crispy Field, Jerry Parker, Drew Bradley, Steve Headley, Tom Olufsen. I bought an atlas based on X-Ring's recommendations. That's a good one, Tom. We're going to talk about it here in a minute. Topic for the night to start off the show is going to be about bipods, but we'll see. It's where actually a good show tonight, I think. I think it's going to be good. Very Hopefully informative. You guys enjoy it. Commando 97. I'd like to say hi to everybody before we get going here. Joaquin Jack Nava. Eric's out there. Andy Amor. Bill Sweeney. I talked to Bill Sweeney on the phone today. And let's see, Brian T. Tank Frank's out there. Ranger 10 millimeter. And Andy Nelson. 45 Auto. I think I said DW. They're just coming in quick. Chris Winsett, Hitting Steel, California. Keith Gregory. V Borg. Matthews out there. And Thomas I saw Rowland, Big Country. 67 Rebel. Spy Sweeper. If I missed you, Abigail's out there. Comment down below. I'm tired of scrolling. I appreciate everybody showing up tonight. We got a we got a special special show for you guys. Uh, we are at X Ring's house today, and um, you can see in the background there. Or are we? We are actually going to <laughs> get around this whole YouTube thing with that's, rifles. That's our. So rifle. what we did is we did our. This is our two by four with a Picatinny with a stud on here it's like a sling swivel stud and then an arca swiss rail on the bottom so this way you guys can see it kind of up close personal and see how it works because more than likely you're going to be running one of those three type of attachments on your rifle and merry christmas everybody it's absolutely all right before we get started we got to do our special bojangles sweet tea sponsored by bojangles tonight even though we're really not and i'm just going to say because i love these guys bortec you guys aren't familiar with Bortec, get over there and check out their cleaning supplies and all the cool stuff they have. All right, let's get crack a lacking. Where do we want to be? We want to be in space? Let's go back to your house. All right, let's do this one even better. What the hell? Yeah, get that off. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, so where do we want to start? Let's start with the... Uh... Well, hold on. Let's, before we get into the bipods and talking about all of them, do you need a bipod, first off? Yes. Why do you need a bipod? Stability, my friend. Stability. Stability. So, yeah, while you can go out there without a bipod, and depending on how you're going to shoot, um, you know, if you're hunting or something, and let's say you're doing a lot of, uh, let's say, offhand shooting or some bracing off of a tree or standing or kneeling, something like that, it might not be so critical to you. But if you're going to be on a bench or if you're going to be prone, there really isn't much that's going to help you as much as a bipod. So if you're like me, you probably started off back in the day, um, you know, in the 80s, about the only bipod that was in existence was the Harris bipod, of which Rick might have to assist me. Can you grab um, that one off of that rifle? Yes. And so we all had the Harris bipod, okay? That's, that was kind of like the standard because there weren't many options back then. And... Hold on while he's getting this thing off of here. We well, guys, we, you know what it is. You it basically, five minutes ago. well, I've got one here, but it's a different type, so I don't want to show them that one yet. We're gonna work our way up to it. Right. So, of course, this one's been painted, but this is a Harris bipod. It's very simple, very rudimentary. You've got two really strong um, springs here, and then. On the feet, you had a couple of different options. On some of them, you could pull them like this. And so just reaching up, you could pull it. So you went from your short length to your long length. Very stable, tubular, 
uh, legs on it and this one had a retract where you just push this button here and it retracts. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and attach it to the rifle. Basically, and I know you guys all probably know this, but basically you have a screw here and as much as you unscrew the screw out, when you push on these, you're going to have feet that come out on the bottom right in there. That's going to attach to your sling swivel stud on the bottom of your stock. So let's go ahead and get this one attached. Once both feet are engaged inside of there, then what we're going to do is just tension the screw. And so you've got your bipod on the end of your rifle. <laughs> oh, hey, this works. Cool. This works. Now, the beauty of a Harris is when you need it, it is so quick just to reach up and pull them down. And some people run it. Or another trick, and it's a great trick, and Rick was getting ready to mention it. Go ahead and tell them. They run some P-cord across here, and you just grab this, and they both come down at the same time. Okay, everybody might not know what paracord is, but it's parachute cord or 550 cord. And what you can do is just run a little loop between leg to leg, and so you can just reach up once and pull it, this and it deploys both simultaneously. It's green, okay. so I don't know if it'll work in the green screen, but that's P cord. So, so the Harris bipod is very fast, it's very lightweight, and the original ones did not give you the ability to do any type of canting, okay? Like that. So I cannot, I'm trying to torque the 2x4 the right now, and it is staying level on the ground. So if I were to set this down on the ground, but my rifle were unlevel, now the only option I have is to either float it off of one leg like this, Add a leg. or I can pull this, but remember, it is going to go all the way out. The only way to stop that is to use this tensioner screw. So now I'm trying to do this, get it level, tighten the screw, and then now I've got my rifle level. So you guys see how that works, okay? Now, there's a lot of different models. Um, way back in the day, they had some that had little ratcheting feet on it. Uh, some you could press the button and it would fly out instead of the opposite of this where it retracts quickly. But believe it or not, guys, even for 2019, the Harris bipod was the number one bipod in PRS. Okay? They're we very get into that. They're very inexpensive. Uh, you can get them for less than $100, especially in a in a world where bipods can easily go over $1,000. And I'm going to go ahead and apologize to you now. I forgot to grab this guy bipod. Okay. <laughs> you guys have seen me use it before. I actually shot it at the Hornady PRC. I got pictures of one. Um, you guys also saw when I was shooting the match with uh, Sky, the actual inventor of the Sky bipod at the, <laughs> at the uh, Bushnell. Right and the yeah, I actually did a little interview with him and everything else. But that is probably on the upper end of the, the extreme there as far as pricing. So Harris Bipod, it'll do everything you need it to do as far as getting a bipod on the ground, but it doesn't have a whole lot of versatility to it, okay? It's light, it's quick, it's fast. Partially, pretty much inexpensive-ish. Yeah, but there, there's also not going to be any type of tracking. No. And guys, so what we mean by this is, let's say you have a moving target, and you needed to track this. You, know, you can either you can either track it or you can ambush and yeah. just, just basically get out in front. Some people call it panning. But basically, if this is on the ground and I try to move the rifle, these feet are going to start jumping because there's no ability to cant here other than the leg actually folding up on you. Okay. And that will do that. They can't do it. Yep. Ray wants to be a stud so bad he carries one with him. <laughs> I hear you. Jeez. <laughs> ah, touche there, Ramsey Country. Hey, before we get going too crazy. I'm not going to go too crazy. No, We're going to take I, our time. I, go I ahead. Know, uh, I want to say a huge shout out. So it's in the beginning of the video. So hopefully he's watching. And he sees it. So Dusty Rhodes, uh, he's uh, you've seen him out there. He comments quite a bit, and a great gentleman. Well, he I read his note, and it was a an awesome note. Almost made me tear up a little bit. Uh, for the years of service, he actually had these custom made, and this is freaking amazing. Let me see if I can get these stupid lights to. Uh, Mess up the green screen. I am going to mess up the green screen, but Battalion Chief, 31 years, and it says, is your six covered at the end of it? I was blown away when I saw this stuff, and then here's a gold shield, which is kind of tough to see, but uh, it says Battalion Chief, and is your six covered? That's so freaking badass. So thank you so very much. I, uh, I was blown away with your gratitude, and... Um, 
I don't even know the words to say, but uh, amazing. Thank you very, very much. Those will be put up here, and I will hang those very proudly. So thank you again. All right, let's get on with the show, but thanks again, Dusty Rhodes. That is, that's mind-blowing. I guess uh, you had contacted Ray and had it shipped to Ray's house, and uh, he... I never said a word. He brings <laughs> the, He brings the package, and he's like, here you go. And I'm like, man. So thank you. Thank you very much. All right, yeah. let's get going here. We got uh, All right, so let's talk here. about price point, because, you know, a lot of times we skip that. Uh, price point on Harris bipod <laughs> is going to run. Don't tell anybody yeah. how much this shit. Well, on Harris, it's going to run you somewhere between you know seventy five dollars on Midway up to about one hundred and twenty something, depending on the options. So we're not going to depart from the Harris yet because you know I kind of cut my teeth on the on the bipod on the Harris. It's what I learned on. It's what I used, but things started changing. You didn't start seeing everything with the sling swivel studs on there. You started seeing a lot of ARs and a lot of other rifles with Picatinny's on the bottom yeah. or a 1913 rail. And so I was able to pick this up a long time ago. Okay, this this bipod right here, this Harris, had an arms mount that was integrated into it and it was not cheap. I remember when I bought this, I was like, holy crud. It ended up costing, it was a little under $200, but it was the first option I ever saw. I mean, this is a really, really old setup here. But what it gave me the ability to do, now we're going to go with the 1913 rail, standard Picatinny. It gave me the ability to put this arms mount on the Picatinny where I wanted it and just smash the clamp. And now I had it on the rifle. If I had a full length Picatinny, I could move it as I needed. And it wasn't so slow. I mean, I could actually move it to the back, to the front. Let's go ahead and attach it somewhere else. And there it is. Same thing, pulled <laughs> down the exact same way. That's some awesome comments. Do you have a lighter uh, uh, backdrop? Yeah. Do you want to leave your house? Yeah, let's leave my house. I want these guys to be able to see the contrast on what I'm showing. Okay. Not the audio. Hold up for just a second, guys. What do we want? Probably the brick would work. Right. Back to jail. Is that enough contrast? Yes, yeah, you can see it there. Good. Yeah. So what this also added was the ability to now cant. Okay, you guys see I have that cant in there. That allowed me to do that. And this was kind of the forefront of these things because there really weren't any other options for this modification. And the lever. Now on huge. the back side, there's a lever. And you guys are still going to continue to see this. Uh, in a lot of different bipods, and this lever is a, what allows you, you can pull on it. And see, I can move this to get it out of my way, but if I don't move it, I can actually tension it. And so now I can adjust how easily this swings. Now I can just kind of move it with two fingers, but then I can torque it down, and it kind of locks it into position. But once again, we have no panning on this or tracking, okay? It's locked in. Like I said, this was close to $200. So... This was kind of the next step. That was now, cutting now, cutting edge. Yeah, it was cutting edge. Now watch this. Now when I press the button, okay, it shoots out. Here, do it again. No, it's all right. Come on. But you're gonna see these little teeth in here. Okay, it's actually a full ring that's around the circumference. And what I could do is on this, I could press it and lock it into these positions. So what this meant was is now I see I set the rifle down. We're gonna say it's unlevel, and I need to get this arm longer. What I could do is just, it's spring loaded. We're gonna pretend the ground is right here. I could press it and it would spring into the ground, but only to the point that it needed and it would lock in. So it was very, very fast, okay? Very fast to get in position. I think this is why the Harris's are so simple and so inexpensive. I think that's why they are still number one. However, there's a very close second. And they deploy going from up to down. Yeah. quicker than a lot of them now i know this is really elementary for a lot of you guys that have been shooting a long time elementary dear but let's go ahead and cover this let's because go. i've seen it many many times you typically on a harris always want your legs forwards don't run them backwards and deploy them out you should learn that quickly. and the reason is <laughs> is because you want to pull them so that when you preload which means you're basically pushing into the rifle yeah, fold they up. don't fold on you, okay? So if you're new to this or maybe you're newer to long-range shooting, you want 
the legs to be able to handle the force as you're loading that bipod and pressing into it. Okay. Well, and you'll be able to actually run the knob. Yeah, exactly. It'll when be on the wrong when side. You're behind it, you can tighten it up. I actually had to use that bipod one time. Yep, I've loaned it out to a ton of people. Now, let's talk about some newer offerings like from Magpul. Now, I don't have an example of one of those. I know a lot of people use them. Um, I've had a chance to play around with them. There's a little more play in those the legs plastic, than I like. Though. And it is a polymer construction. Mm -hmm. So now what we're going to do is we're going to step it up a notch and talk about the number two bipod in PRS and also one of my personal favorites. But before we do that, we should say the difference between the Magpul and the, and the Harris bipod. I would, I would run a Harris over there. Personally, I would run a Harris like the one oh, I just long. showed you yeah. before I would run the Magpul. Now, that's just my personal preference. Now, there's a lot that will look just like the Harris, like a Caldwell. I'm going to yeah. highly oh, urge you to stay that. away from that. We okay? used one of those for a review of a rifle on an American. Was it a Ruger? American? It was a Ruger American. Yeah, a Ruger American. And I complained the entire time. Once you get a good bipod, every time you use something that's not. Look at my ears. I like my gray. Yeah. In the back. Um, you, can, you can tell a huge difference with it flexing, with it not locking up well. True Bradley says, oops, that means mine are on backwards. And like I said, it, it, I don't know if you're kidding or not, but I have seen it quite a bit. I've seen, you know, everything at the range, and uh, I always try to help if I can. I mean, and if you want to run them backwards, that's on you, but uh, typically you don't want to do that, okay? Unless you're on, like, a roof prop, like, shooting where you're, I don't know. I'm trying to come up with something. I, I can't think of a reason why you would run it where <laughs> if you preloaded it would fold on you. Okay, so the number two... Well, let's go to this real quick. Yeah, we'll go ahead. We Did preloaded you? some uh, green screens here, Whoa. so hold on for just a second. I'll try to catch up on some of the uh, comments here. If you guys are ever interested in figuring out what the pros are using, you can go to, I mean, I don't know if this the is... The Precision that. Rifle blog. It's a great, great place to get information on everything from pet loads um, to bullets and everything else. So we're looking at... I think this was in 2019. It was. And this was, uh, basically it'll tell you the most popular bipods and what the pros are using. And uh, from the top down to the bottom, basically. And you'll see... You just have to look at the shading on the bar. So this blue, you've yes. got number 51 through 125 that are running the Harris bipod. And that's a large segment. Now each one of these lines that you see here are 10 shooters, okay? So this would be 40, and then you've got 50, 60, like that. Okay. Yeah. You see it? Yeah. Yeah, if you moved, you'd actually see 10 behind your shoulder. Yeah, you'd have to lean over more, but we're not going to have you lean in my lap. There's 40. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so there you see. So you've got Harris up there, and that might just be because they're simple, they're effective. And, and not too crazy cost work. And you also have to remember, we're also talking about PRS guys. PRS has a lot to do with positional shooting, <coughs> and while there are going to be some stages where you're going to be on your belly, they are not belly matches for the most part. Mm -hmm. So bipods don't always come into play. However, you do want to be as stable as you can, and of course, one of my favorite bipods is the Atlas. Well, the, la the uh, Sniper's Unknown match, there was a rule on pretty much almost 90% of the stages, you can't shoot prone. Correct. So, so it was... You're like, ah, oh, that sucks. Okay, so let's talk about the Atlas. My first experience with the Atlas was the Atlas BT-10. And the BT-10 is a great bipod. I'm going to try to use this white background if I can. And the difference in quality, when you talk about going from machined aluminum instead of, you know, hollow tubes. I'm going to wait for him to finish it up. There you go. Is huge. You guys can see... On the legs here, you've got the knurling, and then you also have the cap that's over there. That is how you're going to be able to engage this. So what you're going to do is extend the legs. So what you'll do is you'll reach up, grab this, and you can grab it anywhere, and you just pull straight down on it. But you could stop at intermediate distances for whatever you need for the distance. The BT-10, however, 
the legs rolled. Okay, so I can take this and free spin it. You guys can see the dirt on the legs there. And so the BT-10 had some complaints. I hate this backdrop. I need a white shirt is what I need. So the problem is, as you were loading the bipod, if you put this on a piece of plywood or something, it'll actually walk on you and just roll like this. Basically, it's like a wheel. This will actually start rolling on you as you're loading it, okay? It's a great bipod. You'll also notice that these buttons here, this is how you're going to adjust the cant forwards, rearwards. This is how you're going to basically put it away or put it to the rear. That's entirely up to you. Now, if you have one of these and they're to the rear, that's okay to store them that way because this is not like yeah, it's, a, not it, it's not like a Harris that's spring loaded. Once you press the button and lock it into place, it is not going to move. It is locked. It is one of the only bipods that you're going to find that has this mechanism to be able to go a full 180 degree throw. Okay, this is patented by them. Five spots, right? And it has yeah. five spots. Now, I reviewed a Warn on my channel. That was actually withdrawn and Warn can no longer make it because it was too similar to this, too similar to the patent. Um, SOCOM put in a request with Atlas, and I actually spoke with one of the owners of Atlas. He told me this was designed for the military. It's, it's great that civilians can, can get this, and he does market it to civilians, um, but it was really designed for the military, military use. But the request from SOCOM was non-rolling legs, and hence the BT-46 was born. Was born. Okay, now this one does not have rolling legs. They won't roll. But there's something else to it as well. And I don't know if That's the camera's going to have the resolution to it, but if you look right here, you see that bump right in there? This bump is ex exists on the BT-46, but you won't see it on the 10. You see that? No bump. And what that is, it's a hard stop, and it was basically to keep it from, from breaking or having too much force to lock this up, okay? This is not a perfect bipod, though, and we're going to talk about that here in just a minute. They did do upgrades, though, the button. Yep, the, what you see on the picture on the green screen yep. is what this button is right here. The new updated version has a larger button. Now, I have actually seen one of these come off and get lost at a match. I've uh, never had that happen with the older unit. I talked to the folks over at BT, and they said they would upgrade all of the bipods that I had to the newer style if I wanted to. There was a slight upcharge for it, but it was about eight or nine Atlas bipods that I've got, so they said they would definitely take care of it. But after seeing that one, it was actually Pop's Quest. He was actually on the, yeah. the chat last night. We were shooting nationals, and he lost that button. So, <laughs> Which really yeah, that was kind of new. Now, one of the downsides of this, let me go ahead and mount this thing up. Here you got the, you got the Here, rifle. Grab the, grab the rifle. You got the rifle. It's called the Big Wood. Now, the one I was just showing you, the BT-10, it does have the mount for a Picatinny, and it was done with a screwdriver you'd have to have a screwdriver they do make a quick release or quick release this one does have an area 419 modification to it which you can buy directly from them they cried with, with a barricade stop okay so which what's nice about this once you get used to it it's a little slower to deploy than a harris okay i'm gonna once you add the barricade stop it, you actually have to extend it one notch otherwise you won't be able to get the legs to fold up so we're here right now so let's say you're on a positional barricade, you don't have your legs deployed for whatever reason, now you need to deploy it. About the fastest you can do this, I've got to press the button on each side, is press, press, and wherever I release it, that's where it's going to stop. If I wanted to do this 45 degrees forwards, I could have stopped there. 45 degrees forwards is not bad when you're on an incline or like a rooftop and you are trying to press down or load on that bipod. So that's not a bad position. You can, depending on the conditions, also run it to the rear like this, and you can press on it that way. This also helps you get a little lower as well, okay, if you need a really low shooting position. You can also change the feet out. You can use a bullet tip on these feet, and by putting like a 5.56 or, you know, like a 6 Creedmoor or something like that, you can press the little steel detent that you can see. Oh, I just had it. it right in there and the feet will come off and you can put these really aggressive feet on it. Yep. But they are solid, robust bipods. 
And then what we're going to check out here is now I've got can't, but I also have panning. Okay, you guys see that? Just think like a tank on a turret. The problem that I have with the Atlas is this big thumb screw on the bottom. You guys see that big thumb screw on the bottom? I see mine works great. His works great, but I've had two, maybe three of these fail to where, see right now I can, I can, I can tighten it. That's the other one. No, it tightened. And so it's giving me more resistance. I can go this way and now I have no resistance. Okay. It's always right. Damn. <laughs> Not always, but I've had a couple that you can't get them tight enough. Okay. And you can send it back to them. Of course they will warranty all of it. Um, but yeah, I've had a couple where I've actually had to pull this cap off and there's some washers with a nut in there and you have to actually cut this thing off. It doesn't just pop off that easily. And you can go in there and tighten it down with a, uh, like a nut driver. There's a company that actually makes a tool that has this profile to it so you can reach up there and get extra torque and tighten it. That's my only complaint about the Harris, is this knob. And they also make one with the lever now, like on the Harris, that little arm. Okay. I've seen that on Amazon or something. All right. So that's the Atlas, and it is a great bipod. I would probably estimate, and like I said, I, this is just me supposing here, I would think for 2020, Atlas probably surpassed Harris. When the new stats come out, you're going to see yes. the majority of your shooters so. shooting this. You don't find them very often when you're walking around. What's that? Like in Hornady, when we were in PRC, yep. uh, there wasn't many. There was a lot of sky pods. Yeah. And then there was uh, mostly mostly Atlas, I think. Yeah. what I saw. Now, an Atlas is going to run... Two plus, closer to three hundred dollars, depending on how you get it. Okay, yeah, it's not going to be low twos either. I mean, they're they're not inexpensive, but they're they're great bipods. They're solid, and I put a lot of faith in these. They they are they are really nice. A lot of options when you go to buy this. Don't get confused. Depending on what you want, with the uh, like this one's set up for the Arca Swiss Rail, and then you have ones for Picatinny, and you got ones for there's a couple options out there. So be careful. Yeah, Charles Tiffy says 50 oh. 50 Harris versus Atlas. Yeah, we just showed that. But yeah. I, I think it's going to change this year. I would think Atlas is going to pass them. And they do actually make it a th three inch extension for these. Correct. So and now that we're talking about the most popular ones, let's talk about some other ones. Now, the Sky is a great, great bipod. And we're going to have to show a picture because my dumb butt forgot it. But. Um, Give us just a second to switch this over. It's on. It's just going to kill the screen. All right, so there's the SkyPod back behind us, okay? It does have the Picatinny over, or the uh, Arca Swiss over on this corner at the top, at the very top up there. So you can use it on the Arca Swiss rail. You have a bunch of different configurations. You can order it with the really right stuff. Um, Arca Swiss up on the top, that's going to add a little extra money. This is a single pull. They make it in a double pull, but you're looking at starting at $500 before we go away though. Uh, starting at about $500, and then you can go to the double pull, which is gonna be about seven to 800, depending on which top you have. And then you have the triple pull, which is gonna run you $1,000, $999. And What's really nice about this bipod is, do you guys see the slot right there? This little slot area you can adjust that V that you guys are seeing right now like this, you can adjust it for a really wide stance mm -hmm. or you can bring it into a very narrow stance. That's a huge That point. is huge, yeah. okay? It's very huge. Especially on big tires, uh, all sorts of different barricade style stuff or very narrow stuff, you can bring the legs way in. Yep. So there's, there's a, if I was to do it all over again, I would get a double. Yep, uh, and they're a good one. I have I have one that I ordered on the 12th. Uh, actually, I ordered a long time ago, but uh, Sky actually uh, texted me the other day. We talked, and he shipped it on the 12th, and here it is the 23rd, and I still don't have it. It's been caught up in that town called In Transit. I don't know where, <laughs> where it's at. So anyway, wherever the hell that so is. these legs actually go forwards and rearwards as well, or out and down as well, but they won't go rearwards. You guys see these holes right here? So what you have to do we'll to put to it in Johnson. the forward position is you see this little silver stud, you pull down on that stud, mm -hmm. 
and it basically takes the pin out and you can move it forwards 45 degrees you can move it forwards again into the stowage position or stored position so you can use the atlas legs or feet on the feet of these right here it uses the same style pattern so if you didn't like these and you want to go with an atlas you can on the sky bipod i highly recommend it, it is very very versatile but it's also one of the most expensive and not everybody can go out and spend seven, eight hundred dollars on a bipod unless you're you're allocating that kind of money towards it. I mean, hell, that's more than some rifles cost. It, the thing's amazing. And uh, I have had a chance to use one and the price is phenomenal <laughs> as far as extraordinarily. Yeah, I wouldn't say phenomenal. That usually means good. No, <laughs> um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like way over the top it basically. is over the top it is uh the upper echelon of bipods but the the thing is it is so quick do you have uh, i didn't bring it just, uh that's just my fault me, just hand me uh well i don't want to show you any of those just hand me this so it's my like, only complaint about the sky bipod is when you get the double you can actually take your rifle smack you and go head. like this and your legs will go and come out a little bit so doing any type of shock or anything like that can cause a problem. My other complaint with it is in order to adjust the tension on the panning and also the cant, you must have an Allen key, okay? Now, yeah, it comes with it, but that's something else to keep up with. Rick can tell you what happened to us out at the <laughs> competition dynamics match. Yeah, we were in Utah and we're uh, basically rucking through to the next stage and this thing was getting loose and in, in his pack and flapping them and smacking them in the back of the head. Literally zero resistance. Just flopping over like yeah. this. And then the worst part is, is as we get to the next stage, luckily, uh, shut Shout out. out. Yeah. Shut out. 88. Um, it was there and his buddy Ben helped us out. But the, uh, it was, yeah, it was a, there is issues. So double checking your stuff. Reason why I like that sky pod right there is, in order to deploy this, Ray showed you, you got to hit this side and you got to hit this side. What's, what I like about that one is because the, the, cant, the cant is so much, you can basically extend one leg down and then cant this over. This doesn't look right on it this It has one. 120 degrees you, so, of cant. So all I got to do is go shing with one, with one and now I'm basically I'm just cant it over and I'm already at the same height. Or the you know I'm level again. I don't have to do this, so that's a, a savings of a few seconds. Which yeah, it has the biggest range of cant of any it's basically bipod adequate. or this type of stuff that you're gonna see. So that's my favorite thing about that and being able to make them really narrow for like really small stuff or real wide for like tires and yeah. Now those have been now Sky actually um, sold that off to MDT. It's still called the Sky Bipod. There's a Gen 2 that's coming out. That's why they've been completely unavailable and you haven't been able to find one. That should be coming out in the next couple weeks or so. And what they were attempting to do, I don't know if they actually did it. Uh, I saw some prototypes, but they were going to have tensioner knobs so that you wouldn't have to have that Allen key. That way, if you needed to tension it, you could. I think they're fixing all the problems that everybody's found with. Correct, correct. But very, but very with the shake of the ingenious legs. design. With the shake of the legs. Uh, it does come kinda... with those feet that you see in the uh, picture right here. It comes with these feet. Okay? That's the way you're going to get it. Good question, Joaquin. You also do not need the heavy duty. If you're looking at a Sky Bipod, the heavy duty is heavy duty for like 50 BMG and everything like that. That's not needed, guys. Okay? I will tell you, if you get a double or a triple, there's going to be a lot of flex in it okay but it will handle the flex what's nice about the double is for somebody my size um right at five almost 511 but closer to 510 i can go to a kneeling position or a sitting position on my butt extend the doubles it's i think it extends out to 18 inches or so and i can still get in a seated position with two two legs on the ground so it's a versatile bipod, but let's talk about some other ones. Well, hold on. Let me show a picture. Um, this is a better picture of all oh, three of these bad doggies. So the it's a it's oh, a horrible, horrible picture. it's a horrible grainy picture, but you can see right there. You can see the uh, the three sections, and that thing is tall. 
I mean, it is pretty amazing. What was the guy that um, we met that makes the different things? Some soft goods in Utah? Oh, you're talking about Blam? No. Brandon? No, not in Utah. Uh, yeah, in Utah. Or were we in New Mexico? It wasn't the PRS. It was when we shot, remember, we were hanging out at their house. Brandon Lamb. No, no. The, uh, the other ones. The other pro shooters. Oh, yeah. What are you talking about? The guy that makes the, the goods. Oh, that is going to be Colin Fossum. Yeah, Colin. He, own, he a, owns Fihu Outdoors. Yeah, he has a triple, and he's like, hey, Rick, check this shit out. And he's like, from basically standing, he goes, ring, all the way to the ground, pretty much. Yeah, you, can, you want to get that background off. That's a horrible thing. You want background. to get that background well, off. Well, people are complaining. <laughs> well, too damn bad. Let's see. I like to be professional, not half ass, so. <laughs> well, and I like a grainy background. You know what? What? There you go. Do that blue, blue one. No, I'm doing that one now. Oh, this one, just you guys want to go back in time? This is when I started YouTube. That was about eight, nine years ago. Look at that young buck. When all that hair was actually had color instead of gray. So if you guys never seen any of those old videos, they are out there still. <laughs> Welcome back to Time Transformation. Okay, so now let's talk about somebody that's newer into the game. They were working on this about three years ago. Uh, they came out on the scene with it, and it is the offering by Thunder Beast, okay? So Thunder Beast, who you guys probably recognize from their suppressors, yep. the best precision suppressors out there, they, they did a really, really good job with this. I mean, look at the machine work on this. It's truly a work of art. You're going to end up paying about $400 for this. We'll talk about some of the features here in just a minute. This one does have a 1913 or Picatinny type attachment. Let's go ahead and attach it and see how it works. All right, so taking note of why the Harris was so popular, because it was so quick, I can just reach up and pull this down. You guys see that? So let's do it again. So now I could actually do this with both if I wanted to. So it was really nice in that regard because it was quick. You'll also see it has the wider stanchion here to give you stability, a little more width on the legs here. Yeah. Now, it won't fold on you. It is locked, okay? So they did a great job with that in being able to make it where it was quick to deploy. Yeah, that actually, that contrast works work well with no green screen. Quick to deploy, but in order to retract it, there's a lever right here. You guys see this lever where my thumb is? If I press that, what the oh. heck? Now I can put it back up. If I had to give it a complaint, it's going to be this. On the bottom, you guys are going to see a knob here and a knob here. That is the only way you're going to be able to get it into a 45 degree position. Okay? So if I want to go to 45, I can't go... I can't see Jack. I can't go from retracted to 45. What I have to do is go down, press the button, then lock at 45. Down, press the button, lock at 45. That's the only way you can do it, and it's one of those, as long as you train or practice with it, you'll be fine. So let me go ahead and put this back into It's kind of nice, though, because you're usually going 90, and when you're going 45, it's a kind of a special thing going on. So Yep. Now, this also has cant, okay? And it's a very simple cant system. It has a machined... I'm trying to look through the light here. Machined billet bar right here, and it works off the same principle. I can pull back on it and rotate it out of the way, but if I want to tension it, I mean, it's probably the smoothest of all of them. You guys see that? I can loosen it up that much, or if I wanted to, I can tighten this up to where it is locked like nobody's business. So that's what's nice about it is the fit and finish. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the legs. So now I've got it locked where this thing's not moving. In order to extend this, you press the button. It's an auto extend. And guys, that's very helpful when you set the rifle down. When I shot in the Bushnell, they had us in a position where when I got down, you were in a hole, and it was basically like this. As soon as you set the rifle down, it was like this. So if I wanted to extend this leg, all I had to do was press this, 
and at least it gave me some, and then now I could cant the rifle to get it somewhat straight. So that's nice. It also has it where you can micro adjust this up or down, very similar, similar to where the Harris had it. There goes our green screen again. Now, as far as the legs, on the ends here, and this is really unique, you've got, it's a, it's a bar, for lack of a better word. And if I pull this bar down, but it's toolless, I can take the feet off. I want you guys to be able to see this. Do you see how it angles upwards? Well, it goes on that bar. Once it gets there, I rotate and it's locked in. It's not coming off. You want to just kill the green? Oh, there it goes. Now, you can as well get extensions for this. So here's an extension. Here's also some more aggressive feet. Let me hold it at the top where you guys can kind of see that. So if I wanted to make it really long, boom, there it is. Now, once you do this, you're still going to be a little long when you retract. But yeah, there you go. That's with an extended leg, but not completely extended. Extra length. And there you go. So this has a lot of height to it, but you've got to put those legs in beforehand. Well, and some of the issues that we have when we shoot at uh, Virtua Defense in Old Fort, which it's a great shooting range, get a chance to check that out. But the uh, you're shooting up into a mountain, but you start off flat, so the mountain's like this. So unless you have enough, a lot of times that's not enough. This is not enough. Um, so they do have some uh, like bricks out there that we use, but having that little bit of extension would make it a lot nicer. It does. Yeah, and uh, we also mentioned that Atlas does have extensions, and then Bill Sweeney says Atlas makes extensions for the Harris as well. So now let's talk about another one. Uh, this is the AccuTac. Okay, now a lot of people ask about this. That just came out. I will this. tell you, this thing is crazy heavy. Okay, of all of them, this is going to be the it's heaviest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's not inexpensive. You're going to be $300 plus on this. What's nice about it is they, they did make it so it's completely user serviceable. Now, can that, you... That's to help with recoil. Yeah, so if you guys see, AccuTac is down there underneath Warren, okay? Oh, shit. Right here. You were saying what helps with recoil? To being all, able to, all that weight. All, all that front. weight. Yeah. It yeah. is. It's probably... It's considerably heavier. I don't have it's the exact like one weight. one and a half, maybe one and three quarters the weight of this. Yeah. But and it's they, it's built, man. Oh, it's built like a tank. Yeah. It and really you is. You can use it as a weapon as well. So this one, I ordered it with the Arca Swiss attachment on it. And so let's talk about Arca Swiss for just a moment. Because if you're getting into PRS or anything like that, you're going to probably want to look for something with an Arca Swiss attachment. Arca Swiss is not new. They've used it in photography for ages, okay? It was just a way to attach photography equipment, cameras, things like that to the top of a tripod. Well, an Arca Swiss rail gives you the ability to where you're basically looking, and it looks very similar to a mount for a, for a uh, camera system. It's just a really wide dovetail with a specific angle. And what you can do is put it on this rail that will typically run underneath the rifle. But what's nice is if I have a really small barrel or a small platform, they love barrels in PRS. I don't know what the deal is with that. You're shooting through a barrel just so it'll blow your eardrums out, or you're shooting on top of a barrel because you don't have much room. Well, the problem is if this is on a barrel, now I've got no place to really throw my rear bag or put an arm, and it's kind of floating because I'm behind the barrel. With an Arca Swiss, that's horrible, dude. I can't see anything. It's blacked out. Oh, yeah, they were saying it was too bright. They wanted something darker. All right. Trying to make everybody happy around here. It just ain't working. All right, let's go back to your house. No? Yeah? It's fine, yeah. Okay, so what's really nice about this is if I have a barrel, what I can do is just reach up. You see this gold knob? And I can shorten the footprint of this. This will fit on a five-gallon barrel, okay? Now, before I digress from this, sometimes they're not legal, but I hate, absolutely hate 
rear monopods. I, I can't think of any reason why you would need a rear monopod in any type of PRS or shooting competition. Especially when you got something like this. You're actually, you're probably going to shoot worse groups with a monopod, or at least that's the case for me. And a lot of guys are like, oh, you can just press the button, you can get it perfectly you know, dialed in, you can screw it up and screw it down, it's perfect. I have an issue with loading it properly when I do that. Because now you have three points of contact, you're not really using a rear bag, and you're just twisting this little knob. So, you know, all these little attachments in the rear for a monopod, I'm, I'm going to say you don't need it for PRS or any ruck style matches. It's just extra weight and it's about useless. Solid light colored background is the best. So your old uh, is your six coverage probably going to be the best for contrast. Yeah, five gallon barrel. That's about right. There is a f oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's about right. <laughs> No, 55 uh, gallon barrel. How about this one? It's too dark in the bottom. Damn. Damn. This is good enough. It's good enough. Good enough. Good enough. I just got to look at myself. That's the worst part. So you guys can see the versatility of having that Arca Swiss. So let's talk about, now that you've seen the Arca Swiss, let's attach this AccuTac. Man, that thing is big. It is huge. It is huge. Huge. It's huge. It's huge. Yeah, I'd get rid of that whole monopod in the back and grab some type of rear bag. So on this model right here, it does have this little thumb knob on the side, you know, like what you guys saw before that was on the rear. And what you can do is loosen it, and that will enable you to slide this. Now, a lot of your Arca Swiss rails are going to have a stop up towards the front. That way you can't slide this off the front end while you're shooting. I usually remove that, just know where your stop is on the end. That way you can pull it off the backside or whatever, but usually that's going to be up against the magwell. I can tell you right off the bat, I'm not a big fan of this, okay? I would rather have something that's a little more low There's profile. There's one there in here? Yeah, because this has two of them. It has another one right here. So I got all these knobs. I got these things that'll grab things and everything else. Now, in order to deploy this, I can't. I've got to pull on it first. And I'm pulling towards you guys. And then I can release. And it will lock into position. It's not bad once you get accustomed to it. And it can be very fast, but your angle's got to be right. You're not going to be able to do this. you got to pull down and then forwards. See that? But I can also go rearwards with this. Okay? But you notice it doesn't lock in that rear position, the full 180. It'll only go to that, there's your 90, there's your 45, and then there's your zero. As far as the legs, you press the button, nothing happens. You have to physically pull these, but if I press it, it'll retract. So it's an it's an auto retract. I've never understood why they even make bipods like that. Well, this you, is the thing. Like, so like you should be in a if you wanna like Okay, so let's say I go down into a hole. Yeah. And I'm like this, okay? What I can do is just pull and get it exact. Yeah, but if you could do that and then hit the button and it shot out to here. Yeah, it's either or. You're going to see that, and that's the whole thing is there's a lot of different options. Some of them auto out, some of them auto in. Some don't do nothing. The Warn actually has a feature where you can single click it to where it retracts. Yeah, I remember that. You go, but like, you got, if like that's one of those, you have to hold your tongue just right, okay? To make it work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like you got to push and slide and everything else. I will tell you, if I, you know, of all of these, this is the most robust. It's probably the strongest out of all of them. I don't know that for a fact, but it looks it and it feels it. It's very, very heavy, uh, and it has a lot of screws in it. Um, just this leg alone, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, but that gives you the ability to take it apart. But they're little tiny screws. It seems like something that you could lose. You also don't have any panning on this. You only have cant, okay? And the cant, let's see here. Let me loosen it up just a little. Wow, that cant is very ratchety. You guys, I don't know if you guys can hear this. It's not bad, but uh, it is rather loud, okay? And that, now, showed, that showed up when? Uh, I actually won this um, at a match, and it took them a long time to get it out to me. So I actually got this a couple days ago. I, just, I hadn't even opened it. And that was like day. 300 bucks, right? 
A little over 300, yeah, I think. Why, yeah. why do I get this thing now? Because I think you wanted to talk about this. I'll let you do that. All right. Well, I want to talk about this, really, first. So that, so what we talked about, everybody, was a was a pretty good chunk of, oh, I don't have it in here anymore. Well, hails bells, hold on. Uh, was a big chunk of bipods. Now, let me grab that other PRS style. And we don't have any to show you, but I do have one. We're going to talk about tripods now, because tripods seem to be like, used a lot so let's go let go here there's a couple at the bottom that i gotta get rid of but just because it won't hold the whole thing and yeah the screen is going to be white for a little bit but here's from 2019 the top pros we're using the really right stuff we're looking at uh 1500 bucks the really right stuff. Uh, like, you can uh, get them a little bit cheaper. You guys know that I, I run the really right stuff. We used that in the last match. It's the most solid tripod I've ever used. And I have a lot of the Manfrotto's. I've tried the Leo photos. Um, there's one that's not on here that I know a lot of people like, and that's the Two Vets tripod, which yeah. looks very similar. Uh, the, I think it's an ODT or OBD or something like that. That looks two, very similar to the really right legs, stuff. Two-piece legs. But it only has two extensions. It is long when you're storing it. It's Now, really right stuff sounds like a really odd name if you've never heard that before. It actually started off as a, uh, I think, photography. They did all of that stuff first. Then they started this uh, division called SOAR, S-O-A-R. And they started offering a lot of different products for the shooting industry. So if you go to the really right stuff, website go to soar and you will see all of uh, the shooting accessories that they offer in there everything from things on the a accuracy international to you name it um, to even binocular mounts you guys know i run a really right stuff arca swiss adapter on the sig now um, but anyway really right stuff is by far the number one tripod and you're going to run anywhere from about 1100 ish for the base tripod and then you've got to get the ball head the Anvil 30 ball head is the one that I run, I think, by far, hands down. If you looked at what these numbers were, almost everyone is running that same configuration. Don't ask me what tripod it is, like the TRS or something like that, 25 or something, because there's so many different models. There's a few versions, yeah. But, yeah, really right stuff is the way to go unless you're trying to save money, but the, there are options. The tough part is, is you see a lot of them. And there's probably a reason why you see a lot of them is because they work, they're durable, they're they're light. You can buy an inic, a, a more inexpensive one, but the problem is weight. So depending on how much stuff you're rucking around or, uh, you know, and price value for sure. I'm sure there's a, a happy medium somewhere. Like he's going to grab one of my Lee Frodo's. I think it's a Lee Frodo. Right? Leo Foto. Lee Foto. So, uh, Kenny, big shout out. I know that you had commented you see a lot of them being used as rear rear supports it's not important that you're running a really right stuff on the rear okay as long as you have something to grab that's all that matters and they probably don't know what you're talking about. and what we're talking about here guys is you might have let's say a cattle guard or something that you've got to shoot off of well let's say it's at that position where it's high enough where you can't get an elbow on a knee my knee is just too far away and you use a pump pillow here you still have a void what a lot of guys will do is they will take their support hand and they will put the tripod behind them. And you can gonna, go ahead and move the I'm chair. Yeah. And what I've got going on now is I've got the Stay. tripod held as stability for this side. Now, some guys will come in on it like this. Some guys will get in a little closer, but you're basically getting stability off of a tripod leg. It doesn't matter if that's a really right stuff. You can use the cheapest one you want. For rear, you can use a broomstick, but you want to make sure that your your <laughs> works better. Your yours. locks here don't collapse on you as you're putting that weight on it, and that's going to be true whether or not you're putting it, putting a rifle on top or not. Now I will tell you, this Leo photo that Rick had ordered Ford is an camera. almost. How much did you pay for this? It was on Amazon like super week or whatever. I don't remember. Yeah, about how much? Maybe 125. Okay, 125. I will tell you, whoever makes this tripod 
is probably the exact same company that makes the Night Force tripod. Uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb here. I don't usually do this. Do not buy the Night Force tripod. As much as I like their scopes, uh, I think they've outsourced that tripod. It, uh, I've had it now for two years and the only thing we do with it is use it for our spotting scope. That's it. Originally when it came out, they said That's you could use it good. for supporting a rifle. Um, I will disagree because all of these lockouts started slipping on me. I had delamination twice from the epoxy from the carbon fiber on the legs. They had that special feature where you could unscrew the leg. Notice how this one does the exact same thing. Happy birthday, KB32. Yeah, John, happy birthday. I texted him that earlier. But they have this feature where you can turn this into a walking stick, okay, or walking sticks. I tried to do that the Bushnell Elite, and the problem is the feet are horrible from that. If you're used to using real trekking poles, these are sorry substitutes. <laughs> uh, number one, they're too heavy. Number two, this, this is too wide of a platform, so in the mud they just slip and slip and slip. Um, it's probably the worst product I think Night Force has made or has offered. Um, and I know that's not going to do me any favors with them, but, uh, but it's I, true. I hate that tripod. I hate it. Absolutely hate yeah, it. Don't, don't waste your money. Buy something else. Old as fudge, Coda Boy 32. He saws out there, Coda Boy 32. Davey J. Plus five, how you doing? Hey, plus five, we're going to talk about your tripod here in a minute. Okay, so big country, you said look into a bog pod, okay? I've had a chance to play around with those, and they are good, solid bipod, or tripods that you can shoot off of and everything else. If you're the guy that's just going out hunting, or let's say you're taking your four-wheeler, or you're shooting at the range, it's going to work out perfectly. But if you're going to do a long ruck match where you're counting ounces there really isn't a substitute for that really right stuff for what it offers in the thickness in the legs the strength in the legs on how much it can hold the portability on how small you can make it it's hard to beat it that's what you're paying for okay you know i've got some carbon fiber manfrotto's at the house and you guys might have seen them on some of the videos holy crap i mean they're built like tanks but i would not ruck with one <laughs> yeah it's they needed the carbon fiber because yeah. it was so freaking heavy. Carbon fiber and about a thousand helium blooms. Yeah, and guys are like, well, check it what out. It's got a group? fluid ball head. It tracks so smoothly. Chances are you're not going to be tracking uh, like that where that really makes that much of a difference. You know, I mean, you'll, you'll track a little bit, but that Anvil 30, that's the setup with the really right stuff. Pops Quest is out there. How you doing? Finally bought an Atlas Bipod. Yeah, Rob, yeah, you did. We actually just talked about we you talked on that. About, yeah, the button. Because we talked about loose. the button falling loose or uh, coming off at Nationals down in Florida. So he had the updated one where that big uh, big button came off. Damn, that sucks. I remember that. All right. <clears throat> That's obviously a 90-degree throw and two-by-fours are 90 degrees. All right. Oh, yeah, you never answered the question. We were talking last night. I don't know if you missed the comment. Someone asked you if your voodoo was a 60 or a 90 degree throw. 90 degree. I think they were being facetious. Oh. Yeah. Well, with that said, I actually looked to see if they make a 60 degree, and they do. Problem is, it's, it's single shot. <laughs> you got to feed each round in. So that's not going to work very well in uh, NRL 22 long rifle competitions if you got to throw each little bullet in there so and, and guys i just want to for those that do follow the channel i have been following the uh the bad mf uh data holder oh my goodness uh you guys you guys killed it for us all we did today and last night was ship orders um, oh, yeah. so if like i said you know listen to what i'm saying if you're ordering a coyote bag with nothing else you should have gotten the email and those have already been shipped out if you got a coyote bag with a kestrel pouch you haven't been emailed yet because i don't have the kestrel pouches i don't want to ship twice but i can't i we shipped out a ton today and big big shout out to rick for putting us on to pirate ship um it made Glad it made help. life easier Glad but uh, we we shipped out a ton and i'm actually getting emails right now on how they can order it so I actually do have some online on the website at xringcustoms.com. 
but I only have Coyote and I have no other accessories at the moment. Uh, Multicam will be in a couple weeks. But big country and everybody else. Um, Remember, like said, this is a groundbreaking company, so you got to grow with us. Not me, but him and Sam. Make it. Uh, yeah, we appreciate it. Like, we really do. Coyote, really do. Sure. Lynn Holtz out there, Pops Quest, he saw. Okay, Tim, I'm sure they're not ignoring them. What am I missing here? Something about the uh, tactical 2x4 or some shit. I don't remember. Yeah, trying to stay on point, we really are. Um, so if I'm, we miss some of the comments, I haven't been able to look through the little hole here. I know. To see it. It's such a pain. It's like looking through a ship, you know, or like a portal on a window, and I'm trying to read the comments in the back. Something that will go wide in his light. All right, so we're trying to catch up on comments. Give me just a moment. Give Rick just a moment. Uh, there's your obviously a 90 degree throw, and the two by fours are 90. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, I'm catching up. I don't think we've missed much up this way. Happy birthday, KBs. Um, All right, bear with us. Trying to catch up. I'm holding the weapon upside down. Proof will not hydro dip the tactical two by four you will rattle can it. Pick a tinny. Got it. Wait a minute. That's the one I think he was talking about. Now we got this one. <laughs> That's right. The Aka Swiss Reel. That one, if you guys... We did this just like five minutes before the show started, just perfect. so we could show you different ways of attaching. It's like, Rick, you got to have a 2 by 4 around here somewhere. I got one. He's like, what about the screws? And we just ran wood screws in here just to show you guys, just to get around the whole YouTube Well, thing. some of you guys that are trying to get into this but don't really know how to start when it comes to like PRS-style shooting, if you have some type of M-lock on the bottom of your handguard, this one here is by Area 419, and it's the 12-inch. Uh, and it, you basically can set it up and uh, run it on the bottom of your handguard, and now you can run... You can put it on an M-lock, just like on his Tico. You can put it on an RPR, uh, yeah. rimfire. It's been on like four or five different rifles. It's just a little section, 12-inch section. It doesn't matter if it extends out the front, but now you can put the Arca Swiss accessories on there from Area 419 or Armageddon Gear or Coltac or any of the other other brands. Yeah, this one is a small bag made by Armageddon. Um, originally bought it for small portholes, if you had to uh, shoot through some small portholes. And it seems to work decent in that configuration. I think having a wider base of some sort, if the porthole that you're shooting through will allow it. Like say this one. Let's see if I can make it so they're both on here. Let's see if it'll work. Uh, what is uh, Rob shooting in the match? You're you're at the 22x match. He's shooting your rifle. He's shooting my uh, voodoo. Okay, so there you go, uh, Brian. He's shooting Rick's voodoo for that. I just got my voodoo back in. I actually put it in the chassis. Got everything right today. Ordered another spur mount and a. Put 10 minutes on the uh, spur, and it's too high. I don't like it. I don't want it sitting up that high. So I think I'm going to send that one back. <laughs> so here's another option. This was actually given to me. I don't know if he is out here still. I did see. Oh, there he is right there. Thank you again. We use this all the time. Um, and this is more for running bags. This one I just picked up. I'm still trying it out. This is the uh, Wee Bad Mini Fortune Cookie. And the uh, reason why I, I kind of really went with it, it kind of talked to me and said, you need to buy this, is because it's set up with the same camel I have for my sandsop gear, so this guy over here doesn't accidentally throw it in his. Which it happens. get it back. Down. I mean, our gear always gets mixed up. And uh, so there's a lot of options being able to run the Arca Swiss Rail. One of the big bonuses is being able to really bring that bipod back like we talked about on the barrels, on, on Ray's five-gallon barrel. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that is a huge bonus, being able to get two points of contact or three, if you want to call it that, with the bipod, and then actually having a bag in the back and still being within the barrel. You get a lot better shot, shot off that way. Okay, so real quick, this is a great question, um, and the question reads, why does the BT-46 have to be mounted with the engraving to the rear? It doesn't have to be, but the way that the 46 was designed for SOCOM... Don't borrow my rifle. You guys are not going to be able to see this up close, but... All right, so do you, you guys see these little those little inserts I was talking about? I'll have my face in the background on the yellow so you can kind of see it. 
one is shorter than the other and that was for loading and for recoil so the way that it was designed it was supposed to be shot that way but you can put it the other way and you'll be fine but i think that is the reason is because one is slightly higher than the other and i think that is so that it doesn't break too much to the rear you see what we're talking about right here there's the front and rear yeah and so if i get it this way guys and i torque this you'll see what i'm talking about we have a little bit of cant forwards and rearwards but there's less to the rear than there is to the front. And on the BT-10, wherever that went, the BT-10 doesn't have those. You guys can see there are no stops in there for that. It's just solid on top of the ball. All right. And kudos to the companies that when they figure out that something's not working right, they, they change it. Yeah. Somebody said I had too many bipods. You, you can't have enough bipods. No, 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 no. Because the thing is, is you're going to have a lot of different rifles. Some are going to have Picatinny. Some are going to have um, Arca Swiss. Uh, some of them, like Rick's got the little X-Ring Tactical that it's got the little sling swivel stud. This? And I can't, yeah, exactly that. I can't tell you how many guys have borrowed bipods from me. So a lot of these were either given to me. You know, I know the guys over at Thunder Beast and Zach Smith did donate that to me. He said, hey, run it and, you know, give a give an honest opinion of it. Uh, the AccuTac I won. I won a lot of these bipods, actually, so. And we are back at Ray's. I'm not sure if Rick is pointing the muzzle at Ray's head or not. It won't be the first time. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we would probably part company. Um what else? That was kind of my topic for tonight. Rick, I know I want to talk about some other things, but I know I get a lot of emails about bipods and buying this and which one's better. You've got to see which one suits your needs and your pocketbook. Um, but you already know what the top two are, and I'm going to agree that Harris and Atlas are probably going to be your top two, unless you just want to step it way on up and go up into the, um, into the sky range. I think the Warren... And the AccuTac, all of those are very solid and robust, but a little too much. This, this is, guys, this is too much. That's, okay, that's all. Um, that would be good for like a a saw or a, <laughs> yeah, yeah, or like exactly. A Fifty, you know, freaking. I don't need anything this robust, and it's too much weight to be throwing on the front. If you have an AccuTac, and like I said, I, I'm not busting on those guys, you know, because well, hey, this is made in the USA, just like the Thunder Beast is made in the USA. You guys know how we are about USA products and even the Atlas. All these are made in the USA, but that, that's just a bit much. A bit much. I wish we had the KB scale here. Yeah. We could have measured them. We have scales, but they're not going to go that heavy. That heavy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can't use a powder scale. Um, before we end the chat, when it comes to... Uh, man, the screen is looking horrible. Yeah, it is. The um, Depending on what you're doing... We got some options here as well. This is a tripod made by Death X Squad, and he's actually out there in the chat, I believe. This is uh, it gives you some options. Um, I had a chance to run this on one of the NRL matches, and did did decent with it in the stage. I cleaned that one actually, so that worked out well for me. It depends on what you're doing, how you shoot. I would say one of the biggest things, especially if you're a hunter. This comes with a 12 inch extension. Uh, being able to not lay on your belly all day waiting for something to show up to that you're hunting and being able to sit basically Indian style and wait for something to show up if you're not gonna stock prey but kind of just post up and wait for them to show up. Uh, this is a great, great tripod. So. And, and I've never that. given a review of this and, you know, big shout out to Plus5 because he did send one to me for review. It has its place. I actually take it with me to the range when we go shoot. Uh, whether I'm using it for a spotting scope and I'm laying down or something like that, or if yeah. I'm in a position, like someone said, if you're bench rest, that would be perfect. Yeah. Sure. But I, I haven't used it in a PRS style match or a 22 match. I, I haven't. You haven't had time. No, it's not that I haven't had time. I've just chosen not to use it because, and it has its place. I've seen Rick use it on a tire opening. Yeah, it worked good on tire. Where he centered side. right over the tire. I just stayed on the inside of the tire went to the far side. Yeah. So it definitely has its place. I think it would be very, very beneficial if you were trying to stay really lightweight as far as your pack. You didn't want anything really long. You didn't have to ruck around the tripod. 
but you needed something that would give you that extra height so you could shoot while you're sitting. It has its place, it really does, but... Um, it's very light too, if you guys are hiking into wherever you're hunting, you're hunting or whatever you're doing, folds up nice and small, fits in your pack really easy. It's got a nice ball head on it as well. Yep. And uh, definitely take a look at it. Death X Squad. All right, so since we have 85 people on here, uh, someone asked about the website. So that website is up and running. I've still got to put a lot of pictures in it and everything else, but I wanted to ask you guys this. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to bring products out that are either things that I believe in, that I know that work, that I've got a lot of time behind them, like the SOCOM Elite, which, you know, guys have been carrying this for 20 years, right? And Microtechs are made in America, made in USA, here locally, right down the street. Actually, he's got a SOCOM Elite now. He normally carries the LUDT. So one of the things I'm thinking about doing is um, I was actually set up as a Microtech dealer years and years ago, but I've just never oh, sold anything. This is going to be cool. This is actually good stuff. news. Um, you guys, I'm not going to be I'm not going to be one of those dealers that is going to sell all of the different Microtechs. Okay, while I love the out the fronts and they have their place, I believe for hard use and everyday carry, working man's tool. True. A working man's tool, there's no replacement for an auto like the SOCOM Elite or the LUDT. You actually have an LUDT. Mm -hmm. uh, gave I gave you one two or years. three years ago, yeah. and he just, just now I just he graduated up to the SOCOM. No. Uh, I'm a big kid, look what I can do. <laughs> I think for all, all around everyday carry, it's hard to beat the LUDT. But if you're one of those that likes a little larger knife, I think the SOCOM Elite fits that bill. So where I'm going with all of this. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. I think I'm going to offer um, SOCOM Elite autos with partial serrated blades. What? No plain edge, partial serrated only. Yeah, because that's just... And LUDTs. So it still look like that. Partial serrated only. Yeah, I mean, partial serrated, there's no... I, Yours is old. Yeah, you yeah. guys might say, well, Yours you, know, you can't sharpen it. You don't need to sharpen it, okay? You don't need to sharpen the serrations. That's 20 years. It still cuts like a, like butter. Yeah, you actually will still always have something that will cut something. And what I will do <laughs> is I'm not going to do an exclusive color like IV8088 uh, no. or any of the other ones. I'm just going to offer it in black, partial serrated, and it'll have the X-Ring logo on the right side of the blade. Just wanted to hear what you guys thought, or should I just stay away from that? I'm not a, I'm not a knife seller, but it might be something because I use it. I think it's good, you know, just to offer on the website. Heck, I would buy one. So I'll just look and see what's on the comments. It says, is "Do not like a serrated at all." Yep, can't help you there. Can't help. <laughs> can't help you there, KB32. No, I never got the Merlot colored knife, Bad Billy. They are unobtainium. Yeah, so, you know, this is a great topic because I hear a lot of guys like KB32, and he's a great, great friend, but why do some people hate serrations? Is it because they can't sharpen their own knife? I, I think every knife should have serrations. There's no point in that. Yeah, I want to actually hear the reasons because... I'm a big rope guy. I hear to, this a lot. He used to do a lot of rest. And you will never cut a rope or tethers or anything like that as fast as you can do it with serrated a no, partial that's, serrated that's, blade that's never going to happen so you got the best of both worlds yep so let's see here i have a very special trudon trudon yes you do trudon <laughs> it's got somebody else's name on it what the hell dw or dw What's says ray can you throw knives oh yeah i can throw anything hell i can throw a rock <laughs> so uh you know i can but not like what is not the like website? some of the guys that i've met what's the website address uh, the website address, very easy to remember, guys. No hyphens, no abbreviations, no punctuation. It's just xringcustoms.com. With an S, customs. Do not forget, customs. xringcustoms.com. Did, Did you say customs? Okay, so I cut lots of rope wire sheathing. Serrations are a must-have. I agree. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Coda Boy says, I can't put a concave edge on it. Oh, he's so right. So the backstory to this is I give him this really nice knife. And, you know, Cody, he's been so good to me. Um, I can't say enough good things about I it. I cannot believe you did it. And so he takes one of You're these your cheap tonight. ceramic draw-throughs. <laughs> and the problem is, if you're not consistent with your stroke, you end up burning about half the blade just in front of the choil. 
So he ends up having this recurve. That's his own profile. So yeah, uh, old profile, KB profile. Don't ever use one. All right, so Joaquin, I will get those up on the site. They are uh, they are going to start making those for me. Um, and I'm not going to offer any colors. I'm not going to offer any. It says black, partial, serrated, Silicon Elite Auto. I can do the manuals for those that are in a state where it's not allowed. LUDT only comes in an auto. Now, yeah, more information on that's that. That's true. So that we kind of stay out of trouble, uh, when I do go live with those, uh, you're not going to see a picture of that on the website. It'll just be called Special 1, Special 2, Special 3. Enough said. Uh, and I'll let you guys know what those mean. So don't get over there and order just as of yet. Yeah, as matter of fact, it's not even on there yet. The only thing you're going to see on there is the Coyote uh, bag. Will it do anything to attract people to your company or website? Well, Brian, it probably won't. The only reason I'm going to offer it is I'm going to offer some things. I'm already in talks with um, Boris Tepper. Okay, Boris Tepper owns Borka Tools. Borka Tools. Yeah. The only place in the world that you can buy a Borka Toolkit is from Borka himself or Boris himself at ShootersTools.com. Um, I think he's going to allow me to offer those on the site um, just so that it's the one-stop shop. If you're looking for the quality toolkit that I, I know that I'll stand I, behind, I you know, it, it's the best. Almost four times a week. KB, <laughs> I use he's got today. one. He said he uses it more than you can possibly imagine. So for us, especially content creators... When we're taking off scopes or even, you know, moving Arca Swiss rails. I had to get this thing off of something else. Guess what I used? The Borka tool set. So what you're going to see on the site is a culmination of things that are not only made in the USA. I mean, everything that I've mentioned. The Borka tool sets are made in the USA. Microtech's made in the USA. My bag's made in the USA. Uh, I just want to offer all of that on one site. So if somebody's getting into it, they can say, hey, I want this. Oh, he's got that. I can get that. But, um, no, it's not about... Yeah, Matthew... I understand. Just bringing California. traffic. You can, you can definitely run the uh, manual. Uh, uh, serrated with black color is a working Limux. Limuges? Limu I don't know. What, I can't read that. Where is it? Yeah, Shaggy Riflesman says carry non and fully serrated blades. Uh, I won't be able to do that. Um, if I only go with two SKUs, realistically, it just makes life a whole lot easier. Thanks, Ramsey Country, for putting that link up there. I have an old black hardware, two-tone blade, so commonly. It's the nuts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is, Outlaw Josie Wells. I think that's actually what uh, Rick is carrying right now. Out the side. I don't go anywhere without the Borka. There you go. And so, you know, it's actually going to be an honor for him to, to let me carry that on the site. Um, there really isn't anything in it for me other than promoting his brand, because if you've been to his website, his website is a little outdated. And so I think just to help promote his product, because it is such a good product, I think it'll help everyone. All right. Eventually we'll be able to shoot like Ray just by all his gear. <laughs> I don't even want to hear it, Kenny. You have a package coming, by the way, and I actually turned around and got those other items that you had requested. So those are on the way to you, sir. <laughs> all right. That ain't going to be the kind of money. I what else can we talk about? It's time to get crazy. I don't know. All right. You guys got any questions, comments, concerns? Let us know. We are in an hour and 18 minutes having a good time. And uh, we're fighting through this whole green screen thing. And Brian, I did not take the comment that way at all. Uh, I, I know exactly. I mean, that's your, that's your wheelhouse. And I am just learning this wheelhouse. I've never had anything that was e-commerce like this, and we're relying on a uh, developer to do all of this for us. He's he's done a good job with it so far, but he's just his time frame is just not kind of coordinating with ours. A lot of other things need to be added. I'll go ahead and tell you guys, you're going to be able to find the Statler pins on there, the ones that are the permanent that everyone seems to borrow from me that I never get back. I'll offer I don't know the why data. You're looking at me, you stole my pin. I'll offer the data cards on there. Um, you know, like the ones that you stick on, the little white ones. Uh, I'm actually giving four of those out with every of one of these pre-orders. You're yeah, actually you guys one in it. see mine. Oh, no, do not show yours <laughs> at all. 
<laughs> Don't even go there. I got a special. <laughs> he got a special one, all right. Holy hell. I was like, what in the hell? Yeah, so I'm going to offer those. Uh, you know, I'm even throwing in some alcohol pads. I'm going to have little kits so you can go ahead and have your data cards, have those pins. Uh, we're going to have the data card holder that uh, will have the prototype. I think they're saying next week. They were actually working on it today. What else? I'm going to have the rifle bags on there. I'm also going to do some shooting bags. So we're working on some designs on that. We've already found some of the best feel you can possibly use. It's actually the same stuff the United States Marine Corps uses for their shooting bags. Do you have a newsletter? A newsletter? Yeah, it says, uh, Ray, I just signed up for your newsletter thing. I don't think I have a newsletter. <laughs> you know what? The uh, I will tell you, the, uh, the IT guy is probably doing... He, He's probably one of the most, he wants everything to be perfect. And he didn't even want to make the site go live because it reflects on him. And, you know, he was like, it's not ready. I'm not even done photoshopping the images. I'm like, it's okay, man. I just need to get this thing live so people can order, make it secure. And he was like, but it's not ready. I'm like, I know what I needed to be ready yesterday. So, yeah. You got How about the gantry type look of bipods that have been, whoa. A beam more than four or five inches in width and the legs attachment. Yes, I have seen those. The ones that you're talking about that have a big curve on them. And what he's talking about is has, has way out there. I think that's more popular in like your F class and some of these other ones, these bench rest uh, style matches uh, that guys are using. But it's so wide. The problem is it takes up too much width in a pack or carrying it. So if you're rucking or doing something like that, I, I'm not going to go for something that's uh, a gantry type. Question on your Lapua testing. Was the lot you ended up with the best at both 50 and 100, or was it mixed? MACF, ironically, it was the best at 50 and at 100 meters. Significantly better than all of the other lots tested. The other seven, actually. All right, let's see this. I have not tried the Leapers bipods, Andy Armour. Joaquin, I appreciate it. Just trying to share what I've made mistakes on and learned throughout the years. So Ramsey Country said yes. F class Matt? and steel plate matches. We got, we got Mac Eve. We got Brian Duchesne. Awesome, man. Bill Sweeney. All those guys are going to be shooting. We're going to be getting to hang out with those guys. Oh, I was supposed to call Kreidemann today. Shit. I forgot to do that, Bill Sweeney. It's been crazy. Let's ask Rick. I can't remember, but he's... Oh, he was, he's DW lying. was looking at the kel rifle with the handguard fold-downs. And, you know, guys, that's not new. What he's talking about is kel had a little rifle. I think it was a 5.56. Five, they offered a couple different chamberings where the handguard actually split, and you could have little legs that came down. Jeff Cooper, I think Steyer did one. It was the Steyer Scout. I had a chance to play around and shoot those way back in the day. But they were very flimsy. Now, it was better than not having anything at all, and it was very svelte because you didn't see it. It was integrated into the handguard itself. Um, really neat. I think more of a, a rancher style application. You know, somebody that pulls up, they need to off this coyote or whatever. It was cool to have, but these are going to offer a lot more versatility than those will. Have you ever tried Leapers, Big Bore, nope. Big something? I answered that. Oh, one. you already answered? Okay. Okay, so plus five. I'm going to make a video. Shoe. On our ace tripod, how it converts to a bipod. Use it as a bipod. Video is coming soon. Awesome. That is your six cover. What bag did you let me use down in Sniper's Unknown that, that I strapped to the Atlas? That was the, uh, which one was that? That was the uh, Sandsock Gear Medium. And I just picked this one up yesterday. It came in the mail. Watch them cookie. The fortune cookie, the mini fortune cookie. Really liking this one. So we'll see. I haven't had a chance to really test it out. You looking for bags there uh, up against the wall, I think? Yeah, there was one over here, but it's the big one. Oh, no, the other one's, I think, on the by the uh, by the Tika. Oh, yeah, right here. Yeah. I think this is the one that's uh, the one KB he was using. asking about. Was it this one, T or, uh, KB, your Randy rifle? That's probably this one. This is a sand sock gear. Great stuff. Been using these for a while now, so it's pretty good. It comes in. You can buy these in a three, basically a small, which is basically a really small squeeze bag, which I really like. Uh, Ray's not a huge fan of it. He likes something with a little thicker, heavier fill. And then there's this is the medium. 
And then there's also the, the large bag, which is uh, a lot, you know, quite a bit fatter than this and then maybe a hair taller as well. But lightweight, this is more for carrying all over the place where you got to, uh... hey Ray, will you close the, oh, yep, sorry. the uh, so this is more for like packing where you got to ruck, you know, a couple miles or something. And this one, I would ruck with this one. It's about five pounds, but it's, uh, I think I'm going to like this a lot. So we'll see. I have to give it a, I have to give it a, a little bit of try before I tell you if it's great or not. At least see if it's working. Let's see. Wishing everyone a very Merry Christmas. Stay safe and warm. Enjoy your time with family and friends. Joaquin says, well said, Joaquin. Appreciate it. Matthew says, all right, gents. I got to put the kids to sleep. Have a good night. Good talk tonight. Thank you. I'll be sticking with the Harris for now. Money reasons. Totally understand, and they're still great. They're great bipods for sure. Uh, let's see. I ran the legs facing backwards with the bag strapped to the bipod and still had the barrier stop to work with. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it worked out well. You could still fold them up. Uh, let's see. Hopefully you guys are ready. Christmas is upon us. And with that, let's get to some... Let's get to a little bit of Christmas action here. Let's put this up. Merry Christmas, everybody. Bill Sweeney, I believe there is one stage where it will come into play. Not sure if you celebrate or not, but Merry Christmas, Otter. Uh, Alice, at least for my money. Yeah, the Alice is a great bipod. It's expensive, but not super expensive. Um, if I was to do it all over again, to be honest with you, I trust me, I wouldn't want to buy it because it's like 700 and something dollars. But just seeing the capability of what you can do with the SkyPod, I would buy the double pull, and uh, you can do damn near about anything you need to do with it. Hey guys, what I learned about bipods is they're kind of like scopes. Don't get rid of them. Sell the rifle, don't sell the bipod, don't sell the scope. Uh, they're not going to go bad on you. Um, They'll probably warranty if it did anyway, but you can't ever have too many bipods or scopes. Um, tea of the day is Pure Leaf, actually. I'm not eat, drinking Bojangles, even though they were our sponsor tonight. <laughs> uh, uh, I do know Matt is, uh, your pal Matt is on here, and he is actually looking at getting a Sky Pod. Pod, Sky Bipod. Very nice. Is he on here right now? Uh, someone said hey to him, so oh, yeah, yeah, he must right be there. here. Hello, your pal Matt. Uh, Bill Sweeney says slings. I don't know if he's asking. I don't know if we'll need a sling. I did when I was looking through uh, whoever that company was that basically had put all the information together of what the top pro shooters are shooting. And you guys can go there and it'll have everything. It'll have uh, scopes, rifles, chassis, actions everything and it'll put them in that same category of the lines and stuff of what uh, the top shooters are shooting but the um, there was one thing where the guy was running a, a tripod and he had it uh, on a QD mount on his rifle and then there was one picture where he twists it onto the uh, the leg of the thing for more stability so you're basically like crank it down so the muzzles down and then fight it to come back and it really stabilizes it. On that note, do you have a Turner, Turner saddlery sling with the double hooks? An old style leather sling? No. Okay. No, I don't. I, I do want to touch on this once. And then um, also there's another way to use a sling with the tripod, but you need a carabiner to attach to your waist. So it, it runs from the same QD on the left side of your rifle, runs underneath the tripod, you know, right at the top, and then it attaches to your, your hips, you know, your, your belt line. And uh, you can kind of shift back, you know, you got to get the thing just right. But you shift back and that basically takes the pressure from the barrel, goes down underneath the uh, bi uh, tripod, and then goes to your waist and that really torques everything down and like, um, supposedly supposed to, I don't know. So maybe if you guys are messing around out at the range and you're trying some things out, Check it out. Okay, so there is one stage on there 
on this NRL 22X match that we're shooting, and I don't think there's any provision against not using a sling. There is no substitute for a sling if you're shooting in like a sitting position, modified sitting position, mm. or even prone without a bipod. So any of you guys that have done like NRA high power rifle shooting, you know what I'm talking about, okay? There is a way to run slings so that it gets that tension on there and you get what we call locked in to position. And it is the most stable way you're going to shoot from those style positions. However, you're, you're going to be under a time clock and it's not quick to adjust. So on that one stage, you have to use one of four positions three times. So you have to use unsupported, you have to use sitting, kneeling, and prone, but use three of the four from three different, uh, at three different uh, sequences of targets, if you will. So I don't think I'm going to attempt to even a, try to use a sling because the lengths are going to be different. If you shoot prone, you're going to have a bipod. If you shoot sitting, that's going to be a different length than kneeling, the way you extend. So yeah, it would be a benefit, but because you're under the clock with 120 seconds, I think you're just going to have too much mess in your way. Yeah, that one's going to be a tough stage. You know, and you see a lot of guys, and I don't know if this is something that your grandfather taught you or you played around with or saw on TV and everybody takes and they wrap their arm around it. and they It's the same type principle, okay? But there's a better way. If you go above the bicep and cuff right here in this area, uh, what that will do is that will lock it in, but it's critical to have this distance set. So on the old Turner saddlery slings, the ones that have the double hooks, yeah. you would actually mark and indicate what your position was. And you would put your distance on there, whether you're shooting at 200 yards and you were shooting uh, sitting, or if you were shooting prone, you'd have your 300 yard mark. But that takes setup time. Yeah. And that's the only thing. Yeah, that'll eat the clock. Yeah, and there's not much uh, clock time <laughs> on these matches. So uh, 45 Auto's got a question. Which of the Harris bipod models? Oh, you know, that's like asking... Um, There's a bazillion. Yeah, in all of the different manufacturers, even on the mm -hmm. AccuTac, there's probably 10 different models, just like Otter commented a moment ago about the Atlas. There are so many different Atlas models, you have to look and see which one suits your needs as far as height, because if it's too tall, and I had one that I was going to bring that's a really tall one, but that's as short as it goes, and it's like 13 inches. It's too high. It's too high. You have to have too much rear support. It's great if I'm shooting uphill, upslope, but you want something that's got good versatility. You want cant, and you want freaking... Uh, Must pan. have cant. Yeah. Pan and, is and not pan, as important. Pan. But that's all you're looking for. Who was that that asked again? I can't remember. But just make sure it's got, it's got it on there. Cant. You want cant for sure. All right, I'm trying to catch up again. Thought on the old military. Sniper. Yeah, conservative sniper hunter. Um, yeah, you know, there's there was a couple different kinds. So the old military, they had a canvas that had a closure buckle, which was a cam tensioner. You could use that and adjust it pretty quickly, but those didn't work as well as those Turner saddleries. The hasty sling, Tim Davis says. Yep. Yeah, we should be able to... I don't even know if the freaking Voodoo's even got any. But it's got QDs. Does it have QDs? Yeah, it has a QD on it. <laughs> well, if you ran, if you ran, you go like ahead and do blue... whatever you want to do. I'm not touching a damn sling. <laughs> There's not enough time for that, the guys. You know, you're you're always going to get zero points if you never shoot at that target. So if you're over here monkeying around, this is a perfect example. Uh -oh. This little tripod thing. Okay, I saw so many guys trying to use a tripod as a rear support on barricade positions where they had to go from here to here to here to here to here to here. And they were trying to drag along this tripod for rear support. The guys that did not use the tripod for rear support finish. got to shoot and finish at shooting at all the targets. Now, let's say there were 10 targets and they hit 8 out of the 10 because they were moving along pretty quickly. Yeah. But then you got this guy with a tripod that goes one for one, but because of his time, he only hit six. Four. Guess what? He dropped two points. So it's one of the, I'm not going to be dragging that thing around for rear support if I've got minimal time with a, with a lot of shots. But then again, you can never miss fast enough, right? <laughs> so just take your time with it. 
And you know what? You don't know what you don't know. Yeah. Dragging a tripod around behind you while you're moving. And I saw this in Utah at the Hornady PRC when we had the cattle, cattle guard. guard yeah. The cattle guard. Most of the pro shooters that were there, they're like, I'm going to use it on that position and that's it. They're I'm like dragging that thing around. That's it. Keep it simple. Are you guys only shooting 22 maxes this year? No, big country. I mean, yeah. there's going to be more of them. I'm planning on trying to make every CD match with the exception of the... The Big Ruck? The, um, the Burst Extreme, because that's a partner match, and he ain't ready. <laughs> oh, don't even talk about you already. I'm well, not if you ready. Gonna, okay, I was about to say, hey, I'll make it with my foot. Don't even go there. <laughs> We'll just duct tape it up. Uh, that is a difficult match. Um, that, that was that, that was, was tough. An awesome match. Not, no, not the one he went to because ain't nobody got time for that. No, but the CD puts on one. I but know. It's really the Team Safari match. Tough. I want to do in the Steel Challenge match. So that's that's two flights to mess with that lady in uh, in uh, Arizona again. No, not Arizona. What state were we in? New Mexico. We're by the. <laughs> Military base, you can't have. It. Oh yeah, Helga, <laughs> Helga, That's or right. Gertrude, one of the two. Oh, that crazy ass, stupid. We are close chick. to the military base. You couldn't have firearms. All right, let's see. Uh, what's up, Andrew? Let's see. Let's see. That's the problem with that little. Yeah, game. Otter says uh, he doesn't like it. Too much blurriness. Too much noise. We look like cartoon figures with the green screen. Hey, it's his channel. I'm just a guest. <laughs> sorry for the negativity. Yeah, it is what it is, Otter. I'm sorry, brother. Okay, so Brian Duchesne, um, CD match is a competition dynamics match. It is put on by Zach Smith, who is one of the owners of Thunder Beast Suppressors. It is the most well-run, well-oiled, most organized match you will ever compete in. Um, he does multiple matches throughout the years across different venues. They're usually going to be in Colorado, Wyoming, or like New Mexico. They do a burst extreme, which is a two-man speed match, basically, with assault stages in the afternoon. And then you also have the competition dynamics steel safari in the spring, and then the team steel safari, which is what I took Rick to uh, this last fall. They also run the Sniper Adventure Challenge, uh, challenge called the SAC. Now, that is a true adventure race. It's 34, uh, 36 hours nonstop, and it's, your, your shooting ability only accounts for about 20% of your score. Most of it is going to be orienteering and making ground up at night, but you're covering a lot of distance in a short amount of time. Don't you even put that sucker on our screen. <laughs> You should see what it says. It says, funny bunches of oats. Boats. Oh. <laughs> What's the name of it, Andrew? Oh, please listen to our podcast. Conservative sniper, sniper says, 15 years ago, this guy is using a leather military sling, a Harris bipod, on his heavy barrel rifle. Continued below. He turned his bipod back the front and from, I'm trying to read, it's from shooting. a sitting position, he put his back leg through the sling to stabilize the rifle to shoot long range successfully with it. I've never seen this before. Okay. That's on the wrong one. That's pretty cool, a rifle. Sounded like he was successful, so that's good. Very good. All right, so if you guys haven't had a chance, go check out friend of ours andrew gun guy he has a podcast called and a youtube channel called uh signal 50 podcast so when you guys are driving around going christmas shopping tomorrow when you're supposed to be already done um check out his podcast yeah plus five has a good point you know uh his his experiences are going to be different than competition-style shooting. Um, he prefers to shoot off of a pack personally. I like shooting off of a pack as well, but I'm not going to choose a pack over precision targets at long range. 
No. And Otter, I totally understand what you're saying. I'm just, we're going to roll with it for this one. We're, we're working on getting the studio up and running better, so it's a growing pain thing. But I do appreciate the uh, helpful hints. Uh, if you find that article, I'll send you X-ray. Let's see. I, okay, yeah, I'd like to see the article, but I think I know what you're talking about because I've seen a modified position where the guy is sitting back like this and he's got the rifle torqued straight where the sling is going through because we, we work on some really odd positions sometimes, uh, but I have seen something like that. James Smith says, what prefit barrels do you use, Ray? All of my prefits so far have been proofs. Uh, that's all I can speak about. Um, I know that I just got my proof prefit uh, six dasher barrel in for my AI. I'm just waiting on the brass to arrive. Got all the bullets and everything else. Uh, so I'm going to try like, my hand at dasher. Nothing at like not having everything. That sucks. Uh, let's see. We are at one hour and 40 minutes of yapping. Hopefully you guys had a great night. Um, we we'll might catch a couple more questions on the way out, but uh, again, have a merry, merry Christmas or whatever you holiday it is for you guys out there, and uh, make sure you guys stay safe during the holiday season. And you'll definitely see me, so I might even uh, I might even do something tomorrow night. So we'll see. Have some. Yeah, fun. the weather's gonna be nasty here. It's, it's supposed to start be. raining in a bit. Uh, All night long, and then uh, Friday, I think the high is 27 or 28. Yeah, there'll be live chatting going on. So if you guys are stuck in a house and got nothing better to do, we'll probably do some, or I'll do some uh, live videos of some sort. We'll see what kind of content we come up with and have some fun. And John Kreiderman, I need to call you um, after this chat. Bad Billy 429. Okay, let's see if there's any last questions before we get out of here. And real quick, while he's reading that, you know, guys, just keep in mind, um, you know, neither one of us are the best, <laughs> but we've I, I've got a lot of experience. Rick's got a lot of experience now. Yeah, um, and just trying to share what I've learned and the mistakes that I've made, okay? So w through all the different disciplines, whether it's small bore, whether it's silhouette, you know, the, the rim fire stuff, these are just things that we've learned along the way, and we figured it would be helpful to share it with you guys because as you do something you're going to learn what works and what doesn't and, and if you've done you that and, and by us sharing with people that have experience in that same field like your ramsey countries and and uh mr did charles there was something else to send you charles did you end up getting that shirt you should have already received it by now i sent it out a couple weeks ago or a week or so ago week and a half ago but by sharing it with people that have the same interests it'll keep people that are trying to get into it from making the mistakes that we either made or we heard from others that we don't want to make. Oh, and he's from Australia as well. I forgot. Um, yeah, and that's the big thing. So I, I'd been shooting since I was a, a very, very young kid and then uh, got into precision just a few years ago. But the things that I had wasted my money on were like cheap scopes. Like I had a bunch of cheap scopes. and uh, Yes, you did. You know, and I made a video. I don't remember how long ago now, but... Like, like here, here's a way to save money <laughs> by not buying a bunch of shitty cheap scopes that, that break. And when I mean crappy scopes, I'm talking really crappy scopes, guys. Yeah, when he first showed up, I mean, they were you guys have heard the story. You great know, rifles. He shows up with a great rifle and it's got a $60 scope on it. I'm like, what are you doing, man? I said, that thing doesn't even track. You can't even get it to get the, you know, yeah. the, it won't the elevation zero. elevation wouldn't go to zero. And look yeah. at him now. It's only like a couple years later and he's got Vortex Razor HDs coming out of his Wall? No, he going to have his wall. I was trying to think. There was a there was a commercial, and, and don't turn this around on me. It was actually a commercial that was publicized. He's got money coming out to Vazu. You remember that? Anyway, you don't remember that. You have to, if you haven't seen it, you need to check it out. Money coming out the Wazoo. What, it what? is funny. <laughs> it is funny. What? What? It was a uh, stock market thing. What? It, anyway. Oh, is he on YouTube? Yeah, you can look it up. You'll see it because uh, it was a commercial. A long, oh, it's a commercial. Yeah, yeah. back. Back when you could actually have fun with stuff, and now everything's racist. Everything's racist. Ever since, ever <laughs> since I switched to barrel brakes, been sticking on target. Those Area Four One Nine is a carbon catch can. Uh, oh, the Harold's brakes. Gotcha. Oh, the Harold's brakes. Yeah. The Harold's is what you have yeah. on yours. I have on the Six Arc. I love that. That thing works well. 
All, All right. right. You guys take care. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. And uh, stay safe. And, Sorry, I'm trying to read that. And comments. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to all you guys. See I, I don't have a tuner on my 223 AI, Conservative Sniper Hunter. Straight barrel. Y'all have a good one. See you guys Merry tomorrow. Christmas. Merry Christmas.